attention. Author and speaker, Bonnie. You're watching Vision Plus. Without a vision, the people perish. One of the exciting things about that verse from Proverbs is that people across this country get an idea of the vision they'd like to have in their life. And one of the most exciting people that I've met over the last dozen years, I uh, knew his mother, she went through cancer, what kind of cancer was it that she had? She had um, cancer on a, in a tumor on her back. Yeah, and my daughter has breast cancer, so we know a lot of people that have been, but she, she was my Sunday school teacher at one time, at, uh, so, and also, just an incredible family as a brother that's a minister and also a realtor. And his name is Alan Mann. Alan is a person we're going to ask him about that is running for uh, to become a judge. And all of you will be hearing more about that between now and November. Uh, he's a person married, got beautiful, handsome children. So why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Thanks, Bonnie. First of all, it's an honor to talk to you, and the feeling's mutual about you and your family. Um, I have, I'm have i a native of this county. I was born here um, and have grown up here. Our family had a farm out in the county, and, and they still do, and, and so we were raised to work and, and with a certain um, respect for not only the, our community here, but also a work ethic. Um, I went to... Um, Graduated from New Hope High School here in this county and then went to Auburn University. I met my wife there and came home with a wife and a degree mm -hmm. from Auburn and then uh, went to law school and came back here to um, start my legal career. Mm -hmm. I, my brother went to law school and he took the bar exam three times and never did pass it. But he was really, really happy <laughs> to learn what he needed because he actually owned a business and this helped him in his business. And I have another friend that went to law school, didn't pass, but he used it for his business. So I congratulate you on well, passing the bar exam. That's not yeah, easy. Yeah, that bar exam is a bear, but it's, Ooh, but it's um, but something you, you only want to do once. Now, you have been more than a dozen years here uh, as an attorney, haven't you? I started here in 1993, which was 17 years ago, as a, an assistant district attorney. Mm -hmm. Our district attorney, then Tim Morgan, um, hired me as an assistant, and I worked there for five years as an assistant of his. Went out into private practice in 1998 and began doing several things, primarily um, criminal defense work, trial work, and also some real estate practice. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, help us to understand the difference in civil and criminal, all the different aspects. I know you didn't work in domestic. When people I did very little domestic. domestic. I did some civil. Civil, mm -hmm. the civil and criminal uh, vastly different and, and civil is basically someone suing for some money mm -hmm. some damages some compensation for something that uh, needs to be done or has already been done um, some act and that's primarily what's at stake criminal of course is someone's very liberties at stake based on some kind of violation of the crime of our Alabama code mm -hmm. and so you have actually been involved in all three of those aspects the yes. real estate and been involved in, in, in quite a few aspects of things over the years. Do you know there's so very few that raised, born and raised in Madison County? You're well, doing real estate practice over the years, we get to meet a lot of people at their loan closings. And it is unusual, uh, more and more so, to find someone that's born and raised here. Although we have lots of good transplants here. Mm -hmm. Lots of good that's folks good. have come to Huntsville because I, they know it's a good place to live. I hear well with here at USA Today said it is... Uh, and several other publications talked about it being the number one place to live and Certainly raise is. a family. And we're so, fortunate uh, to have the community we have right. here. Uh -huh. So, what? Tell me something about some of the cases. What's the most scary criminal case you ever did? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a. Um, it's a variety, and over the years, I've handled probably um, 1,500 or so criminal cases, huh. and. You have everything from someone that gets a DUI or gets caught with shoplift, shoplifting or, or theft of property to um, capital murder. Mm. I've handled almost two dozen murder cases. Mm. Um, about 16 or 17 of those have been capital murder cases, which are kind of the, the peak of what you handle in criminal law because they're, it's not only liberty, but maybe their very life at stake if the death penalty is sought. So, so you face some very tough situations um, those cases get very grueling and, and time-consuming and, and draining, but but they have to be handled 
professionally and by competent lawyers. How do you do your research on this particular person or what's happened? I guess you go back through cases that have happened. Well, you, do, you have to, depending on the case and what the facts of the case are and what unique issues there are to that case, you, you do as much background work as you can into not only your client's background or or the other party's background, but also the um, what precedent of law may have been set that, that might help you um, form how you're going to form a defense for that case or the prosecutor how you're going to present your case legally. So there's a lot that goes into preparing and, and investigating and, and researching every single issue. Of course, if you're going to seek the death penalty on someone, you've got to exhaust every everything that you can to make sure that person has had a fair defense. How does the Madison County uh, compare with other counties as far as a backlog of Well, that's that's issues. one of the whole reasons we're sitting here, Bonnie, is, is that um, Madison County has has six circuit court judges currently, and the legislature passed in early 2008 to add a seventh circuit court judge. The uh, we lobbied the legislature for a while. We all know how tight money is in all forms of government, and state of Alabama is no different. But the caseload here was so critical. We had not had a new circuit court judge since 1974. And having grown up here, I was very small then, but just imagine how the population has grown since 74, oh, yes. and we have not grown with it in our court system. And so just adding the seventh judge helps some to give you some idea of the backlog. The research that has been done across the state of the average circuit court judge, which is the position I'm running for, handles approximately 1,200 cases a year. The Madison County circuit court judges had about 2,500 cases a year. And, and, and the numbers reflect that we could possibly uh, ideally have 10 or 11 circuit judges. That's probably not going to happen. We're lucky to get the seventh at this time. And so it's a minor fix, but it will help some to try to alleviate caseload and, and, and get them moving a little bit more. But the backlog is just tremendous here based on the, the number of cases. I know Deanna is a court mediator, which uh, they just try to handle the little tiny things to see if the judge can say, okay, you've got your property across this fence, you need to do, you know. It's well, and in civil court. cases particularly, judges refer a lot of cases to mediation. Mm -hmm. Um, to try to get those worked out um, yeah. and, and to free up the courtroom time for right. some cases that have to be tried. Uh -huh. I, uh, my grandfather was circuit court clerk uh, back uh, many years ago in Paragould, Arkansas. Right? Well, our clerk mm -hmm. here has a, a great responsibility, and you think about the, that number of cases that have to go mm -hmm. through that office and uh, organizing the juries, and, and Jane Smith is our clerk here in Madison County, and she does an excellent job. and, and uh, but everybody has to work together to get yes. those moving. Mm -hmm. Well, now you are, as you said, you met your wife at Auburn. Right. Tell us a little bit about your family. Uh, my wife, Amy, and I, this summer, we've been married 20 years. Oh, uh, good. And we have three children, and two are in high school, and one is about to be in middle school. And and so that that keeps us busy. But mm -hmm. we, we're very blessed. And, of course, my family's here, having grown up here. And we have some you know, cousins and brothers and sisters here. And... Uh, we, we have a good time. It's hard to find time to get together as much, but with everybody's busy, but but um, we, we have a good time, and we're, we're very blessed to have a good schools here, a good church family, and a, a good community to raise our family in. And I know your um, mom so active always for many years in the real estate field, and she has just been an example as a teacher, Sunday school teacher, and doing special things. And your brother has always been very active in a lot of things. Went away for a while and back again. Right. So, have you ever thought about uh, running after you are the judge? Did you say you're going to the judge? <laughs> have you ever thought of, how, do you have like a three year plan, a five, ten year plan? I don't, and I really had not planned to do this until well, just a few years ago. What well, happened? a couple of things. Uh, a few folks encouraged me in that in that direction, and I still kind of resisted that. But but there's such a need there, um, not only for just someone to fill the spot, but for someone that's going to work hard, and for someone that's going to be um, that has a love and a, and a, a, 
commitment to this community to make sure that that justice is done, that fairness is employed, and, and I have a great respect for our judges. I've, I've had the pleasure of practicing in front of numerous judges here over the last 17 years, and some are retired and some are still there, and, and, and our judges do work hard, but they, they weary after a while, and we've had some retire and some that may be retiring in the coming years, and it's time for some somebody with a little more energy to get in and, and to work. Um, one of the big things about our court system now that we're going to have to employ as, as across the state and the nation is we're going to have to employ technology more to help with caseload management and that's that brings change for lots of folks but but it's still we're going to have to find ways to to use every resource we can to, to work with this caseload it's not going to go away but we're going to have to do the best we can with it so we, we've got to I felt a call to move um, into that direction my great grandfather was a county commissioner here a long time ago and uh, we've always been taught on, about on community. the man's side yes mm -hmm. about community service and um, there's a service aspect to it um, and I feel like this is just the right time with this new position um, that uh, it just seemed to be a, rough, a good fit and so this is my decision well you have something in front of you I wanted to hear what you had well, to say about that well this I wanted to make sure I got these numbers right because they're they're fairly updated. Um, when when our contingent from Madison County, which included our DA and some judges and the circuit clerk, went to the legislature to try to get this new position, um, they they were um, they used some numbers based on our caseload, and these are updated now as of 2009, just to give you some some idea of the volume that there were nearly 14,000 cases filed in the circuit court alone here in Madison County in 2009 and just one year and, and over 44,000 in the district court or the lower court in, in 2009 and so therefore you got that many you have to dispose of every year to be able to just to keep up and so it, it's really difficult to, to do that now district court and circuit court are different and we can how just, are they different just uh, well for us kind of a thumbnail of what we have four district court judges right. in Madison County, and, and, and this new position will be seven circuit judges. Circuit judges have what's called general jurisdiction. They have jurisdiction over pretty much anything, any kind of case that can come up, um, civil or criminal. They, circuit court judges hear cases, civil cases where the amount in controversy or in, involved in the lawsuit exceeds $10,000. They also hear criminal cases, which are all the felony cases, everything up through the murder cases and, and all felony offenses. They also hear all divorce cases and domestic cases. So that covers a lot of, of cases. The district court has limited jurisdiction. It has jurisdiction over um, juvenile cases. It also has um, hears misdemeanor cases. Um, Here's civil cases that are less than ten thousand dollars, and small claims cases that are less than three thousand dollars, and the, the the backlog in the circuit courts get comes about when not only the circuit court has the original filings that ha originate in the circuit court, the felony case, the large civil case. The if you lose in district court, if I sue you in the lower court, and I lose, I can appeal that case up to the circuit. So it has to start new now in a circuit court. Same thing in a criminal case. If you lose in a misdemeanor criminal case in district court, you can appeal that up to circuit court. And many, many people do that. So that creates a whole new case, even though it's the same case, now in circuit court. So it, it's it's confusing, but it, it, it really log jams the system when there's so many filings and we haven't kept up with that with our, with our facilities or our staffing. Mm -hmm. I know with the brat coming in, that's going to be a lot more. Right. The I'm problem's gonna not going to go away. No, it, it isn't. Yeah. I know, uh, I'm sure your mom saw it, and I saw it in one of my huntsville or, um, well, I think it was a chamber publication or one that I found, and it said, there's a need, will be, are, and will be a need for 22,000 homes for them and that includes the current homes, right. 22,000. That means a lot of movement's going to happen and a lot of new people that will not understand maybe the way 
that the circuit court works in the South. Well, and every every state country. is different and right. has their different system, so it, it, it is something to learn. And just that influx of any number of, of citizens is going to bring with it, just by averages, a number of, of new divorce cases, a number of new, even criminal cases and civil cases, just as your per capita goes up, so does your caseload. And that's just naturally going to happen. So we've got to find a way to, if we can't keep up with it with our number of judges, at least with our system that it, it, it runs smoothly to do the best we can. To kind, kind of expedite all of everything for you. And, and that's the tough balance. Right? And I think our judges that we have, um, somebody asked me why I had, had not run before. I, I would probably not run against any of our sitting judges mm -hmm. um, because I have lots of respect for them and the mm -hmm. job they do. And and so this new position gave me a, a good opportunity. But But the balance of expediting cases and still making sure that each case gets its due is is a tough balance because you can become such a machine that you're just running cases through the system and that's not justice or you can let spend too much time in this one area and let these others go and that's not justice either so it's it's very tough if you're the one that's getting sued or you're the one that's on trial your case is very important to you and you're not just one of the 15,000 this this case is your life so a judge has to it's, particularly in a divorce case or a domestic case, when you're deciding on issues that are going to affect people's lives for the rest of their lives, custody of their children, things like that, it has to be given such serious consideration, but at the same time, you, if, you, if, it, if the case just languishes in the system, your life is put on hold in the meantime. So it's a very tough balance, and um, it's easy to criticize others that do it without knowing what they're having to consider and what they're having to do in the meantime. I see you have several statistics. Tell well, some, some people, lots of, these are some of the questions people have asked me about okay. what, what is a circuit judge, what is a circuit? Well, we have 67 counties in Alabama, mm -hmm. but we only have 41 judicial circuits. Um, each, some counties, particularly the larger counties, are circuits in themselves. Madison yes. County is the 23rd judicial circuit. Um, but some of the rural counties Combined. combined to make a circuit mm -hmm. where there may be just one circuit courthouse that, to hear uh, several, th several cases. Counties. But that that's where the circuit comes in. Mm -hmm. And in Madison County, um, every judge is elected countywide. We, we are not elected by districts of certain areas of Huntsville mm -hmm. or Madison. Or the judges, that's another question we get a lot. People say, well, can I vote for you? Well, if you live in Madison County, anywhere within the bounds of Madison County, and our registered voter here, then you can vote. So you'll be on the ballot, whether it's a Republican or a Democratic uh, ballot, you'll be on that ballot, won't you, on both of them? Then. Well, yeah, I, on the, in November. If you do not have primary opposition, you're no, not you on the don't. ballot in June at right. all. So and You don't have primary opposition. I do not, right. So you don't have to concern yourself with June, you just concentrate on November. Right. And of course, you know, everybody knows you can't vote but for one um, party or in yeah. the primary, but of course in the But you'd in the be general listed election. on both of those. In the general election. In the November. general elect right. election. So that uh, they don't feel like, well, if I don't if I don't go a certain direction, I won't be able to No, vote you can cross around. over and vote yeah. for whoever you want in November. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, some of these other statistics that you have. Well, just the number of judges, just to give you some idea in Alabama, there's currently, a, and these are, I think, up-to-date statistics, 143 circuit judges. Um, there's 279 municipal judges, and we know that many small towns have their own judge. Uh, Huntsville has a municipal court here that employs full-time judges, and, and so every those count um, as just like a district court judge would, and, and those judges, if you lose in the Huntsville Municipal Court and you want to appeal your case, those go up to the circuit court as well. So there's a lot of, of possibilities of, of cases flowing up to the circuit court. Another thing you unique about the circuit court, it's the only place you would get a jury trial. Um, there's no jury cases in the lower courts, whether it's municipal court or district court. And that's another responsibility that a circuit judge has is overseeing, which is a very different proceeding. I've tried many non-jury cases and I've tried many jury trials and it's a whole different animal. Uh, if it's a non-jury case, you have one person to convince and that's the, the judge in the case. Um, the jury, you've got 12 to convince and they're average citizens who are usually not learned in the law, so it's, it's fact, a different they <laughs> seem like, like they prefer to have people that are not. I remember one time I was called for jury duty and they 
were asking the questions they always ask the jurors or potential said uh, well are you do you have a certain person you would vote for now in the um, in my case I said well yes I know the attorney it wasn't Alan Mann but it, whoever it was it was another state and I said whatever he says I'm going to believe him I didn't get to be <laughs> that we probably struck <laughs> The, the jury, but you have to be honest. You have, and the jury selection process is, is such a unique thing, and I, and I, you hone that for years, and you never perfect it. But you, but depending on the kind of case you got and what issues are involved in the case, you really try to un, uncover any biases that you might have in the jurors, and for both both sides do that. And it's a, it's an inexact science for sure, um, but it's a, yeah, it's, it's an interesting process to, to get down to. Uh, a jury you can well, now you have those three very beautiful and handsome children tell us a little bit about how they feel about their daddy running <laughs> for judge have they been kidding you about it here here come the judge well they <laughs> initially i think they did yeah. but i i think as we if we've, we've gone to some events they have learned a lot about our system um, they w weren't as interested in what dad did at work Except a few times we might be in the news on a, on a murder case or something, they might follow that. But, but all of a sudden they started learning more about our court system. I don't know if any of them will follow in a legal career or not. But, but I'm I'm grateful that they now at least have a, a good working idea um, of what our system is about, and that they've helped me campaign and they've gone to some events and it's been a family effort. It's really been a blessing for our family and to have. Um, them in my corner means a lot. Win or lose, I, I can I can handle it as long as I Did go home. Did you go to the family? I'm, we're, we're having this family meeting. Dad wants to run. <laughs> we did. We had a, when we have a, a serious talk to have. We usually sit at the at the table and and talk about it. And sometimes they're scared when it's time to sit at the table. But this was a positive thing, and and we had we had a talk, and they were. Um, my, my youngest um, thought I'd look funny in a robe. That was her her initial reaction, but. Um, but I think over time they, they've really enjoyed it, and so I'm, I'm, I'm proud to have them along with me at this time, and uh, I hope they'll remember it fondly at some point. Oh, yes, they will. We're going to Washington, D.C. because my granddaughter uh, needs to know more about the history in the, in the United States, so anything we can do to help our children or grandchildren learn more about the system so that we can do the very best in voting and in uh, what we do, what is the difference in felonies and you know everything, and what do you need? need well, to do? and it's there, it's it's complicated in a lot of ways, but getting people to learn at least the basic constitutional principles and to appreciate what we have, we oh, have yeah. um, our system's not perfect. Um, I don't think it'll ever be perfect, but but it is so much better than what most anyone else has. Oh, it for is. all the flaws that we may have in our justice system. Um, where else are you entitled to the rights that you have here or entitled to the fair, the fair trial that you have here? Um, now, you ask someone that loses, they may not think they were, were treated fairly, but, but I think we have overall a, a very good system. Well, I know we don't want to get into specific cases, but you know, just recently there was a person that was, the jury said he was not guilty for murder. Uh, mm -hmm. When you hear something like that, and let's say that you had been the attorney or somebody else the attorney. How do you guys handle if the jury comes back with a, a decision that you think should have been going the other well, way? That, you, the jury always comes back with a decision you, that somebody didn't like. Yeah, um, that's true. And that's, that's why true. it's an adversarial proceeding. But I mean, one of the things that the attorneys have done, and, and, and I have great respect for a lot of our district attorneys mm -hmm. that I've tried cases against, mm -hmm. very good friends. We'll go to battle. I mean, we'll fight tooth and nail in the courtroom, and then maybe go to lunch together. Uh, it's just there's a level of professionalism you have to take. That everyone has a job to do, and, and I've told juries this before: the system in a in a criminal case, at least, doesn't work unless you have a fair judge, a very competent prosecutor, and a very competent defense attorney, all doing their job to the best of their ability. And if any part of that breaks down, it's not really a fair proceeding. Um, so you, you want excellence on all fronts, from the bench and from, from each side of the courtroom, and, and we try to do that, and most of the lawyers that I know here try hard to do that. Uh, but it's, um, it, when you, it takes a, a bite out of you when you lose, 
Um, and it's, uh, but you have to pick Are, yourself up and you, fight another day. Have you had to take cases that you uh, took aside that you really didn't agree that the person was either guilty or not guilty? Have you had to? Well, uh, there, there's some cases you take where they're, um, it, it's, it may just be how the situation happened. We had a, a murder case a few years ago where a young man walked into a, a restaurant and shot some, some, some folks, mm -hmm. and, and that, you know, there's not a question of who, who did it in a case like that. You're mm -hmm. just, you're trying to look at all aspects of the case and what may have been their mental state or what um, what may be an appropriate sentence, and so you're not always fighting a whodunit case. Sometimes it's, it's more of a trying to present each side of the case and getting them to see, um, getting the jury to see not only this one particular offense, but this person's life and, and, and what all led to that point. And, and it's, a, it's a tough balance, and, and criminal cases in particular are, are very tough and, and they're hard on juries to hear, too. Well, you're very active in your church, the faith-based uh, attorney, and I, I did research with um, 24 congressmen in Washington, D.C. Uh, when Zach Womp from Chattanooga was one of them, and Bud Kramer from here, they were all, we were, I was working on the doctor to, to find out about what we can do about latchkey kids and kids that are, uh, well, the arsenic hour from 3.30 to 6.30 when maybe yep. parents are not there. And so they, this $200 million that Clinton had uh, allocated for that, or uh, Congress had, it was shown that faith-based answers are what we need. And you're a very faith-based Christian that everything I think that you wonder about or figure out or do research is based on very deep ethics that you have. How did that come about? Tell us about your Christian life. Well, I was uh, I was raised in a, in a home like that where you were taught certain values. Mm -hmm. And I know everyone is different with their religious background, and I think uh, it's a very healthy thing to respect everybody's differences on that. But, but I do think coming with some very basic biblical ethical principles, you, um, they instill in you when, you, when you're put in a position to work in whatever field you work in, they automatically give you your, your default, your, what you go back to, whether it's hard work, integrity, honesty, treating people the way you want to be treated, all those go back to your upbringing, um, and, but they're not wearing your religion on your sleeve per se, they're just, they're living by the principles that you, that are part of you. And, and, and when you go to be in a judge position, you know, it's very inappropriate for a judge to, to legislate religion or from, from the bench. That's not something that, you're, that you do. But what you, what you can do is um, reflect your faith in a very real way by the way you live, whether it's, um, whether you're, it's your ethics or your work ethic or, or the way you treat people, your compassion you have for people, um, your sense of right, those things think our ways that we exhibit our faith every day and, and they, those things speak certainly louder than any sermon you might preach and so in, in that sense my faith is very deep and, and has a lot to do with whether I'm no matter where I'm working what I'm, what I'm going to be about mm -hmm. and you are in addition to your Christian ethics and your work ethics and all of them that are based on your morals uh, you have a, a sense of doing something that leaves a legacy for not only your children, but all the people's paths you cross, the lives you touch. I've observed you for the last dozen years. Well, I appreciate that, and that's mm -hmm. maybe that's conscious. Sometimes, sometimes maybe it's. Uh, I don't realize that, but I think you get very few opportunities to make impressions with people for good, and sometimes you only get one. And, and so you, you certainly want to take every opportunity you can to leave a, a positive impression, particularly of a Christian, to, to someone. And, and I believe taking those opportunities seriously.